it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I am here with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. Hey, guys. All right, so we are going to be with a special guest who's in studio with us. We have had her on the podcast, I think two times before this at least. Uh, She has been at our church for many, many years now. We're so thankful for her. My mom would always have us call all the teachers because she was our teacher. We call Miss (laughs) Sheryl. But um, we want to introduce Miss Sheryl. Not Cheryl, wait, not Cheryl, but Cheryl <laughs> Lamana, yes. right? Yes. Lamana. Yes. Cheryl Lamana. So thank you, Cheryl, for joining us. And we're excited to go over everything voting and props and everything like yeah. that. Because so. we need help. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we need help. Yeah. It's a well, big election. Yep. Thanks for having me. It is. And it's a very crucial election. And I think we've been hearing for the last at least 12 years mm. that this is the most important mm-hmm. election of our lifetime. Yeah. But... It w- uh, this one very well could be that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to be very careful how we vote this year uh, mm-hmm. in order to preserve our freedoms, keep our Constitution, the biblical values that we care so much about. And, I mean, just look around the country. We've got problems with the economy, inflation, mm-hmm. our national debt, um, housing, food prices going up, uh, the problems down at the border. And mm-hmm. and then there's Israel mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. hurricane that just impacted us in North Carolina and uh, Georgia mostly. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. there's a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And yes, it's a very important election. And this one in particular is important here in Arizona because the ballot is going to be long. Mm-hmm. It is four pages wow. mm-hmm. and very tiny print because we not only have to address all of the federal and the state candidates but we also have 13 ballot propositions and the reason they are so key is because once they're voted in it's very very difficult Mm. to change them to undo them because they've become a part of our state law Mm. or the state constitution and uh it's it's Mm. almost an impossibility yeah and i don't think a lot of people research them exactly. because they just think i'm just going to vote for the people mm-hmm. and propositions uh, and a lot of times they're worded in a way that you're like i don't really understand exactly what it's saying so you don't have time to that's like what you're here or, to help yeah. us with right yes so, yes yeah. because the last thing you want to do is go to the voting center and have a four-page ballot and have yeah. to stand there and think mm-hmm. about things and and people are going to just give up if they haven't researched it in advance yeah. so i would encourage anybody when you get those ballots in the mail or when you get the book that has the you know the sample one in mm. to go ahead and just start filling it out mm-hmm. yeah kind of have to be careful when with the candidates especially when the ballot does come out because what they'll do is reverse order of oh, candidates that so sense. that no one candidate always appears first or second yeah so Hmm. you do need to read it but yeah but hopefully we'll go through these propositions today Mm -hmm. and uh that will enlighten some people Mm -hmm. i am not an expert i've gone to several meetings about this Mm -hmm. uh goldwater laid in um, some of their comments on some of them and uh i'll try to put them in not the not legal language that the lawyers have in the actual propositions yeah <laughs> and uh, Dumb it down yeah, for make us. it make, make it, it for a layman <laughs> for and a uh, and then also i'll give you some websites then so that you can include that maybe in this and yes. people can look up some other sites that also offer things like the party platforms mm-hmm. which is always a good place to start let's look at from the very beginning and figure out well where do i lay more so than the other mm-hmm. and then uh also they have also put some information together on what their opinions are from a biblical standpoint, like My Faith Votes and American mm-hmm. Family Association and ones mm-hmm. like that. So yeah. I'll mm-hmm. provide that too. Yes, that'll be awesome. We'll have so. that in the description below and hopefully mm-hmm. on the screen as well. So, mm-hmm. all right. So, okay. So, start? I'm going to start with. Um, I'm not going to necessarily go down the numbers, but if you have a piece of paper and want to start writing numbers down and saying yes or no, that's fine too. But Mm -hmm. I want to start with 140. 
once open primaries, the open primaries and ranked choice voting. Hmm. Arizona already has open primaries. If you are an independent that's registered or someone who is party not declared, Mm -hmm. you can go in. All you have to do is either call into the office or uh, go into the voting center and ask for a ballot. Mm -hmm. But you have to tell them, I want a Democrat ballot or I want a Republican ballot. Mm. And what 140 wants to do is change it so that you would have a ballot that did not have any party listed whatsoever. All of the candidates would be on the same ballot and you wouldn't know who you were voting for. Mm. So, um, and then if they were able to get the rank choice voting on that one is what they had up in Alaska recently. And it was so bad that that where you like say like your first, second, first choice, second choice, it goes through all of Mm. these algorithms to figure out (laughs) who actually wins. And you could end up having you know, say there's 20 candidates. How are you going to rank 20 Mm-mm. candidates? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just, and it's impossible mm-hmm. to do audits on it. So mm-hmm. it's it's really not good. And I think this 133 was done then in order to combat that. And what it will do is require the same that we have now, that mm-hmm. you know it's a Republican, you know it's a Democrat. Yeah. So it, it just kind of enshrines that either, I think that one is in the state statutes. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so those two. Good. My recommendation on that one and everything that I've read and been able to investigate on that one says vote yes on keeping 133 mm-hmm. and vote no on 140. Yeah. Now, you may have heard in the news that 140 also, there's some controversy over that one because uh, the paid uh, petition gatherers were um, telling people, you know, to sign here, and it turned out that even though they had well over the required minimum um, signatures, a lot of them were fraudulent. So, Mm -hmm. so far we're down around 100,000 off, and they're expecting it's to go down either further. So there's Hmm. kind of up in the air whether that one Hmm. is going to, uh, whether that one is gonna count Hmm. the ballots we count. Are you saying there's a hundred thousand fraudulent ones? Mm, more than that now, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they had they submitted about five hundred and seventy five thousand, oh. and it came down to four hundred and something with the first round. But now there's they're finding even more. Wow. Mm. So yeah, that are yeah. not valid. So mm. so no on one hundred and forty. No on one hundred and forty. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's that's an important one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, next one is pretty simple. It's a geographic distribution requirement for citizen initiative signatures. So that's what we were just talking about, that sometimes people will uh, pay Mm -hmm. petition gatherers, signature gatherers. And generally what they do is they'll go to Maricopa County and they'll go to Pima County because that's where the primary, you know, that's where the largest number of voters are. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, this one says, well, wait a minute, you are disenfranchising people that live in the suburbs or in rural areas. So what it will do is require all of the districts in Mm. Arizona to have signatures. Mm. Mm. So that's a good one. That's a yes vote. We want everybody to be, have a say in what goes on the ballot. What number was that again? That is 134. 134. 134. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. (laughs) On that. (laughs) So 135 is legislative limits on governor emergency powers. We all lived through that in, during COVID. Mm-hmm. And it's good that they have powers for emergencies. Mm-hmm. But as you may remember, that one kind of dragged on and it kept being renewed and mm-hmm. renewed. And, mm. and so what this one's to do is actually put it in to um, ensure that they cannot do that on their own, that after a certain point it expires, unless the legislature agrees that it has to um, continue. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it kind of takes away the yeah. auto- mm-hmm. autocrat, mm-hmm. <laughs> autocracy, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Where they can good. just use that to have power to right. tell you just what to do. Want. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's 130. 135. Five. Yeah. That's yeah. yes. That's what? Yes. Right. That's, that's a yes. 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 Yeah. yes. So far we have three yeses it, so and like, the no is the 140. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So one. I was making it clear for the listeners. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
136 is pre-election challenges to ballot initiatives. That one's kind of surprising because you're out gathering all these hundreds of thousands of signatures and you don't even know if it's constitutional. Mm -hmm. So this one is a yes because we want them to do that before people spend all this time and money doing all that work. That's Mm kind of... Yeah. Just using wisdom. Saving Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Uh, 137 is eliminate judicial term limits. Currently, there's a system, whether it's good or bad, there is a um, judicial type of a commission that actually evaluates the judges. And they also do, like, questionnaires to poll uh, people who have been in court under these judges. And then they take all of the feedback and everything. And all they do is rate them as meets or doesn't meet Hmm. the qualifications. So you kind of have to go by what they're saying. But, yes, let's let's eliminate those term limits. Mm -hmm. And if they're good, they're good. And they stay in office. And if they're not, they'll be kicked out. Mm -hmm. Uh, The next one, 138, is called Modify Tipped Worker Wages. Mm. Now, I'm going to be honest. This one is a little bit confusing. And I, with the two meetings that I attended that went over the ballot uh, initiatives, uh, they, they each had a different view on mm. it. Mm. So I've looked at it further. And um, I could get into the weeds. But basically, to me, it comes down to, do we really think that minimum wage laws should be in enshrined in our constitution Mm. or Mm. should we let it you know let the situation you know prevail based on what's actually happening Mm. in this Mm. world yeah yeah Yeah, people don't understand that that's what the propositions are for it's for the state constitution is that right some of them are state constitution and some of them are just for the arizona state law oh Mm. okay yeah yeah this one would this one the constitution yeah 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 okay so yeah, so maybe kind of leave it up to what's going on in the right, society right. you're saying. Yeah, not it's, like in the constitution. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it sounds good that you're that you're doing giving extra money, mm-hmm. but what happens is here's the minimum wage. The employer can take away three dollars of it, and it leaves them with this much, and then there's some convoluted way I guess that they would have to figure out well, how much did they really make? And Mm. I I don't know. I don't know Mm. how the bookkeeping on it would ever be able to happen. But Mm. Mm -hmm. so so to me personally, that's a no. Mm -hmm. But some people may think otherwise. And I just, Mm -hmm. you know, suggest researching it even further. And I think we all know, at least at this church, what 139 (laughs) is. um, Yeah. We're definitely a pro-life church. Got the wristband on. Yeah. (laughs) Good. Yeah. And, uh, there's a, a lot of issues with that. I mean, currently, Arizona law already allows abortion up to 15 weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's almost four months. Yeah. yeah. So. Sorry, too much. <laughs> yeah. so we don't want to go further. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And, and this one actually would allow abortion for all nine months. Mm. It takes, it doesn't, as the petition gatherers said, it doesn't protect women's reproductive rights because it no longer requires the ultrasounds, so women don't know if they have an ectopic pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It enables um, anyone to take a minor to go get an abortion without parental knowledge. Uh, There's a a lot of things that I I Mm. don't think that this one is... Yeah. Even like the professionals, you don't have to be a doctor or something. They really deceive. Like I was at the library and this lady came up to me. Mm -hmm. I was in my car. She came up to my car. And uh, she's an older lady and she said, oh, yeah, this will just help. Like if someone, if their baby just happens to, to die or they miscarry and they have to get the surgery, they can get the surgery. I'm like, you can already do that. Like yes. people would be dying mm-hmm. if that wasn't, if that were the case. We're like, we just heard about that happening with someone we know. And so we're like, that's, you're being deceitful. That's not what that's saying. And she's like, oh, well, maybe that's in a different state or something. I was like, well, <laughs> then don't say that about this. And then another guy came up to me and I, I had my baby girl with me, Eliza. 
And I was saying, I'm, I'm pro-life. And he's like, I am too. And then he walked away. And I was like, what? Like, so <laughs> people just do it. They're doing it for money, money. too. Right. Like someone said that they pay really well. And if you have a hundred or if you fill up the first page, or if you fill up every page, like every page you do, you get more money. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just and they're incentivized mm-hmm. by money. Yes. So. And some of them are paid hourly, $25 mm-hmm. an hour. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, they'll sell. Yeah, yeah. Sell just for yeah. getting signatures. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like this paper. This was on our um, info table at the church, and it's it goes too far, but it basically kind of breaks it down, uh, mm-hmm. just what it's really meaning. Because when it says like every individual, that's any age, including minors, without parental consent, um, then it's like talking about how even where it says. Uh, for aiding or assisting, this can include the sex abuser who's forcing his victim to get an abortion with, um, to cover their crime without parental consent. Uh, and then just like the, even the things with it says, uh, physical or mental health of the pregnant individual. This is U.S. Supreme Court defined mental health broadly, allowing late term abortion for virtually any reason. So if you just yeah. not feeling well that day. Uh, and then the person, the professional healthcare professional is not even, doesn't even have to be a doctor. So everything's very vague and they try to make it where you're thinking, oh, I'm doing a great thing because what they put the fear in you. They put like, even when you see in the debates, they're like, say these women's names and this woman had to go to this state and then she died. And it, Mm. it makes it where where their focus is on is if you don't, you know, support like, are you if you're not pro-choice, then you're basically killing women. That's yeah. what they're saying is like yeah, all these women are going people's emotions, to die. you know, yeah. Yeah. because and people know, like, I mean, it's very obvious mm-hmm. when life starts. Like, mm-hmm. it's Everyone scientifically, it's they always say follow the science. So it's like, scientifically, people know when a life becomes a life. It's not like after you know the baby comes out of the birth canal. But yet, it's an emotional thing that they keep trying to play upon. Right. And that's why people say that we have to, you know, play upon that too now because they don't listen to the facts. So you have to, like, show them pictures yeah. of what they're doing, that they're killing these babies. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's an emotional thing. You right, know? right. Yeah. And the health of the mother, that's already, as you said, it's already enshrined here yeah. in Arizona. It's already there. It's already allowed. Yeah. And yeah. you mentioned the, the debate, Mariah. The two cases that were there was fact checked by the SBA. Mm. Both of the women ended up, I think, with sepsis, yeah. and it was from the abortion pill. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, they'll use wow. anything. I mean, that goes back to people who died of like all these different things, but it was like they died driving there to the hospital, or I don't uh, know, just yeah. they'll use anything. But. Um, also, I just want to read really quickly. I know we want to get through these quick, but this one is a very important one, but I'm just going to read Psalm 139. And I think there's a reason why it's prop 139, but Psalm mm. 139, I won't read the whole thing, but, um, it is Psalm 139 in verse, oops, where's the starting verse? About being formed. Yeah. Okay, 13, it says, You made all my delicate inner parts of my body. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. You Mm. watched me as I was formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of a womb. Mm. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. So even before our, oh, your birthday starts, like, our lives are recorded and God sees that as valuable. So if you are, especially if you are a Christian, there's no way that you can, I believe as a Christian, you can never vote. You cannot vote yes to this. Yeah. Because God's against murder, right? Right. Exactly. So that's, that's clearly, you know, killing a child. Mm -hmm. Yes. So So. no, no, no on (laughs) prop 139. (laughs) Big no. Can't stress that enough. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Next one. <laughs> okay, next one is fast. Uh, Prop 311 is first responder financial death benefit. 
So right now the federal government has a certain amount of money that if somebody dies in the line of duty that's a first responder, they get X amount of money from the federal government. Mm. But this one will also give it a certain amount of money. Uh, I want to say 275000 but I might be a little off on that. Would also come from the state. Mm. And that sounds good because otherwise um, the, the um, insurance is very, very costly. And for someone mm. to have it on their own self. Mm-hmm. So this will mm. kind of help a family out. Yeah, okay. that's good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Next one. Oh, property tax refund for non-enforcement of public nuisance laws. As we know, there are a lot of homeless people. Mm-hmm. Mm. And sometimes they'll go into neighborhoods and they will... Um, break down a fence, camp in people's yards, get into their sheds, different things like that. What this will do, this is a yes, this will require if the police do not respond to a call, it will enable the homeowner to save their receipts for how much it costs them Mm -hmm. to fix what the homeless people destroyed oh. that were not responded to, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, and it, and they can submit receipts in order to get paid back. Mm, that's wow. good. So maybe they'll start enforcing our laws yeah. then. Yes. I know uh, this is maybe unrelated, but similar. Like, I don't understand all the, like, squatters. Like, they could just take over a house, mm-hmm. and then someone's like, they're in my house, and they're like, and you can't just kick them out. I don't understand that. No. I yeah. guess it's different for each state, but... My dad was saying also if you don't if you're late on your property taxes they could take your whole house in Arizona. Mm-hmm. So we got to somehow fix that. Like this guy was I think $11 short. He's like he can come up with $11 but they don't give him a, a chance and they just take his $300,000 house and they just sell it and he's got nothing. So That's terrible. Yeah. So what prop was that? That one is um, three twelve. Okay. Three twelve. Three thirteen. Also pretty simple. Life in present imprisonment for child sex trafficking. Mm-hmm. If you're convicted now, you can get out maybe in seven mm-hmm. years for good behavior or something like this. This will just keep them in jail forever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's a yes. Yep. Uh, 314, create state immigration and border enforcement laws. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know what's going on with the invasion at the southern border. Mm -hmm. And the federal government should be doing that, but they're not. So this one is a yes, because this enables the state Mm -hmm. to set up our own laws and deal with the problems. Mm. That's good. Yeah. And we have 315, which is the last one. Legislative oversight of excessive regulatory costs. So on that one, we have uh, businesses that have to follow certain regulations, and some of them are a bit costly. So they just want to have um, a system whereby if it's over a certain amount of money that it's going to cost them, that it has to have our Arizona state legislator take legislature take a look at it mm. and determine whether this should be that way or not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm, that's a yes for me, yeah. too. Yeah. So essentially, we have mostly yeses. We have 139 and 140 that are absolute no's. Mm-hmm. And then the 138 on the tipped worker can go either way. Yeah. I'm voting no. I don't think it should be in the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Research your own. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. And this election is important. I know you were saying that earlier, mm-hmm. but it's... It's so important, and I know that a lot of people recently have been saying, I'm just not going to vote. So why would you encourage them to vote and not to just just say, ah, it's up to God? It's like, I mean, God calls us to do our duty, right? Yes. I think there is also, we talk about sins of, um, like, sins that you actually commit and then sins that you just, you don't. Act. choose to do so that's right. you omit so mm-hmm. commission sins of commission and then omission i think not voting i'm not saying this for sure but it seems like it almost becomes a sin of omission because we know what we should do and what we should stand up for even though we're not voting for jesus of course <laughs> but we know the biblical principles and we know things that and we know our duty as well mm-hmm. and so i think to not vote it could be something where God's saying, like, 
you were supposed to, you know, this is a part of your duty and to stand for what's right and for what's true. Even if they're not perfectly aligned with you, they're not going to be you and they're not going to be Jesus. But yeah, so what would you say? I kind of took over. Oh, that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the issues are out there. Yeah. And it is our sacred duty Mm -hmm. to vote. Yeah. We're supposed to take part in our government Mm -hmm. and to just sit back and allow someone else who has maybe complete opposite opinions of you to have their vote counted Mm -hmm. and and we don't sit we don't do anything about it just doesn't seem yeah like it's the right thing to do yeah yeah and i think um i don't know what's true and what you know with all the all the stats but i heard that evangelicals it's the voting has gone down and so Trump is looking to other people yeah. in order to win, mm-hmm. right? Because he he does care about this country. So evangelicals are not because seventeen percent and- supposedly. I don't know if this is true, but seventeen percent of them it's gone down to where they haven't. They're not. They're saying they're not going to vote and stuff. And so he's looking for other votes in other places. And then evangelicals are like, oh, he's compromising. Mm-hmm. But it's like we're not voting. So he's kind of like, well, I'm going to go to other people who will vote for me. And so I think that's another reason why we should step up and vote. Because if you look at his values, and I know they say, oh, don't say who to vote for. But, like, if you look at his values, they do support the family more. They support our country more. Mm, And so it's like like if we really care about this country, if we care about our families and our future families, you know, our future descendants, whatever you want to call it, like mm-hmm. that, that's why we should vote too, you know? Yes. Mm-hmm. So were you going to say something? No, I was just saying it's so important because when we just look about the other candidate, when we look at Harris and we see what's going on, we might think even I've seen people who call themselves Christians who say, oh, but wouldn't that be awesome to have a woman president? Or wouldn't that be awesome because she's <laughs> black or whatever? All these things, I'm like, that is so wrong. That's not why we vote for people. We don't vote pe- for people because of their gender or because of their race. Like, that is... That's not that is r- <laughs> That's not <laughs> right. If you don't like the policies that have already been enacted It'll these three and a half years or almost four years... She's had the time to It's going to be yep. the same she, because she's been part of it she's been yeah. running for most of it because biden's been on vacation a lot of times <laughs> <laughs> but That's so vacation. she's been doing that and then a lot of the policies that she copied and pasted mm-hmm. were from him you know yeah. from mm-hmm. his policy. so it's going to be the same type of stuff so if you don't like what's happening or been happening for these past few years then we shouldn't perpetuate it and vote the same people in you know exactly and you just look at as simple as even the immigration like how especially we know as arizonans and tucsonians or whatever how Mm -hmm. close we are with all the fentanyl that's bringing on Mm -hmm. brought in the children that are being taken like just for the security of our country like this is dire this is so important and i think even just the protection of israel like we mm-hmm. know Israel will be more protected. We know more babies will be saved, even whether or not Trump is becoming even whatever he's we think pro-life he's not as we as want we to be. Wish. Yeah. But he there he's more, more babies are gonna be side. protected under Trump. And mm-hmm. so that's where we just need to stand, do our part and then pray and then leave the rest to the Lord. That's right. And so yeah, that's yeah. what we're gonna say. But yeah. mm-hmm. anyway, Cheryl, so, do you have any closing? Yeah, it, this year as compared to last time we had an election, uh, we were told, go to the polls on election day. Mm -hmm. That's not the story this year. This year they're promoting that we get our uh, votes in early, get our ballots in, Mm -hmm. um, and we have early vote centers. Ballots will go out. If you do a mail-in ballot, which 80% of Arizona does, the ballots will be mailed to you um, the 9th of October, so Mm -hmm. very soon. Mm -hmm. And... You can go to, uh, you can fill it out and take it into an early vote center if you want. And there's a box there that you just insert it in. It takes two seconds. And if you wanted to, you actually could tell them that you want to do a ballot. And and it would be as if you were voting on election day. Mm. They would give you a ballot. Mm. You can rip up the old one. Don't do it ahead of time, but rip Mm -hmm. it up 
don't give it to them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and then they they you vote it there. That you put it through a machine, just like in the old days when you went on election day. Mm. Mm. That's cool. The one thing with mailing in a ballot. First of all, the ballots are produced up in Phoenix. Then they're mailed, they're trucked down here to um, a post office in Tucson. And then they go back out into the mail to all of the citizens. Mm -hmm. And from there, if you mail it, it now goes through another series of Mm -hmm. people before it finally gets over to the elections office and goes through that procedure. Mm -hmm. If you drop it in the box or vote personally, Mm -hmm. then... It goes directly from there right over to the election center. Mm. Okay. So it, 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 it's a little bit safer. Yeah. Um, and we want to get those votes in as quickly as we can. Mm-hmm. Bank your vote, as they say, mm-hmm. and get them in there so mm-hmm. that if there's any problems with machines or anything like that this year, we don't have to worry about it. Our vote's already in there and ready to be tabulated and counted. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, That's good. Yeah. And so if people are concerned and they want to, like, be a part of it in any way, what can they be there during it or just to there will be you have to register to do um to observe at the polls on election day Mm -hmm. you can go through your party's office in uh most likely in tucson Mm -hmm. uh and um if you want to actually go to the um, elections office, the recorder's office to observe what the people there that are working do with the ballots. You can do that as well mm-hmm. and go through the same people to sign mm-hmm. up for that. Those shifts are shorter. Mm-hmm. I think the ones on election day are like, it's, you know, it's a long day from six in the morning until eight, mm-hmm. nine o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. So that's long. So mm-hmm. I think they only have two shifts for those days, but for the other ones, it's the shifts are much shorter. They're more like four hours. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's a lot easier to do. And mm-hmm. so do you know where they could find like where the early voting is or what would yes you they finally have that up on the pima website okay. if you if you do a search for pima votes mm-hmm. it, you can click on that and it pulls it right up and has all sorts of information on there mm. awesome yeah. yeah yeah and so any other um resources resources or websites you would encourage we can put it in the description below yeah so. yeah i'll get that to you yeah yeah all right yeah. so Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Cheryl, for being with us. We're so excited to be able to do our job and vote and vote biblically. And so thank you for your wisdom and encouraging other people to do their job to research and all of that. So we'll put all the descriptions and links down below that will help you with that and they re- and have to register by the 7th, 7th yes so so this I don't know podcast when this video- will already be out yeah thank mm-hmm. you again and pray vote and yeah Do give it duty. to the lord <laughs> all right well thank you so much for joining us on calvary conversations if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this video you can also follow us on instagram at calvary conversations and please make sure to again check the description below for any resources to help you with this next election thanks so much guys and god bless